Let us pray. Holy One, as we come into this place this day, we ask that your word may be known in our hearts and our minds. We ask that your message of good news, of joy, of welcome, of lifting up gifts may be known throughout our lives. I ask that the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. For you, O Lord, our great rock and redeemer. Amen. As we hear these words this day, I have a couple questions for us to meditate on first. And that is first, who in our greater world are the people we often look past, that we often don't notice or see? And secondly, what are the gifts that are out there in the world we often ignore, especially those gifts we fail to lift up or to truly value? As we ponder those questions, I invite us to, to imagine that we are there with Jesus in this story. Whether you close your eyes or keep them open, that's fine. But imagine for a second that you are there 2,000 years ago in this small town of Bethany on the edge of Jerusalem. Imagine that you are there in the house of Simon the leper. You follow Jesus from Jerusalem. You've heard him speak. You've heard something new and amazing in him. There's something captivating and you want to follow. Maybe it's the healings and the miracles. And so you've come to Simon's house along with the disciples. And there you've come to see what Jesus will do. You've come like a good Presbyterian, most likely very quiet and still and not wanting to do anything yourself, just to see what will Jesus do. So you expect everyone else to do the same. Don't say anything or do anything till Jesus tells us. Let's just sit down and be still. And as you sit down, maybe some bread is served and a meal is started. Maybe there's some light conversation, but you're still looking out. What's the next thing? Maybe Jesus will go and, and heal Simon. And everything's on what Jesus will do. When out of the corner of your eye, all of a sudden, there's a woman. No one's mentioned her name to you. You don't know who she is or why she's there, but she's entered into the house. You don't pay too much attention, but she keeps getting closer. And so you turn, face her, and you realize she's carrying this beautiful, beautiful jar. And out of the jar, you smell this incredible smell. You know there must be very, very expensive perfume or ointment inside of it. And the scent gets stronger and stronger. You wonder where she's going. Maybe, maybe there's something with the house that, that had a bad smell before, and she's coming to put a little bit on. But you notice then that she's approaching Jesus. And right then, as you all are sitting there, she comes right up to Jesus. She breaks the whole jar and she pours this ointment all over his head. You are startled and surprised. What did this woman do? Why is she here? What is going on? And you quickly realize that the disciples are just as startled as you, but more than that, they start to get angry. They are here to see what Jesus will do. How dare this woman interrupt this? How dare she come in and, and pour this upon Jesus' head? And more than that, they realize this is an expensive thing of ointment. And they think, what a waste. As they've been traveling from house to house, town to town with very little money. We could have sold that for so much money. Why did you break it and pour it over his head? And they start to get angry. They start to, to say things about the woman and they look to Jesus and expect her to expect Jesus to be just as angry. Instead of Jesus standing up and rebuking this woman as he did to the religious leaders just earlier that day, Jesus instead turns very calmly to his disciples and he says, see this woman. She has done a good deed for me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my head and made me ready for burial. That shocks them and surprises them even more. And then Jesus says a phrase that shouldn't just surprise the disciples, but maybe us here about this woman whose story is not often told at churches whose name we don't even know. Jesus says, whenever the gospel, whenever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, whenever we talk about Jesus and what he's come to do in the kingdom of God. Jesus says, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Jesus is saying that she is a part 
of the gospel story. She is a part of God's work. She is a part of what I've come to do. It's a pretty amazing thing. But this woman, daring action and praise, is part of the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's all because she, this unnamed woman whose background we don't know, who only rumors and anger are being spoken about by the disciples, this woman, because she takes a risky, daring step of love, is lifted up as by Christ as being worth so, so much. It reminds us, it reminds me at least, reading this story this week, that what Christ values above all else isn't as much as we might love it, our great sanctuaries, even our great music, even the best sermons. That's not what Jesus prizes above all else. It's not even the best programs or plans, as much as they might help or serve others. What Jesus seems to value and prize above everything is our small acts of love and praise. It's our small acts of care towards God and towards our neighbor. That's what Jesus values above everything, above all else. It's why this valuable ointment being poured out all at once, it isn't a waste in Christ's eyes. It isn't just a moment of regret. It's a moment Christ lifts up and says it is worth it because it's a tender act of love and of care. Now, this woman probably doesn't know what's about to come in a few days where Jesus must go to the cross and die, but Jesus does. And he knows that the next few days are going to be lonely. They're going to be hard. They're going to be extremely difficult. They're going to be even days that he's going to try to get out of. He knows he must go there out of love and grace for us all. In this moment, he receives a moment of care, a moment of support, a moment of tender love from this woman who he hadn't even met before. This woman who maybe just heard stories about Jesus welcoming in those who had not been welcomed anywhere else before. Maybe she'd heard stories of Jesus making the lame to walk and the blind to see or feeding those who are hungry or simply speaking about a greater world and kingdom than the one we know now. Whatever it is, she can't hold back her love. She can't hold back her praise. She must pour out whatever she can. And for her, it's this very costly ointment. We don't know where she's gotten it from. Maybe it was something passed down from generations brought to her. It sounds like it's probably maybe her most valuable possession in the whole world. And here, with Jesus right in front of her, she can't hold back. She must pour it out. For Jesus, the Savior of the world, come to earth to be among us. For Jesus, that moment of tender care that moment of support, that moment of someone, some individual saying, you are not alone, means everything. It means the world. And so while the, the disciples are grumbling and arguing and want to say, how dare she? She says, no, this is an act of great love. And whenever you speak of me, you should speak of this woman as well. A lot of times we think of those who show great love and act out Christ's kingdom here in this world, we think of them only as the, the famous people, the people who make history books, names like King or Teresa or Tutu. And those people have definitely done wonderful things. They have poured out uh, the abundance of their anointed oil upon this world. But it's not just those people who Christ values and loves and sees gifts in. It is everyday, ordinary people like you and me, people who simply can offer moments of love and of care and of service to a weary world and need a far more tenderness and love and compassion. So many of you do it in so many ways here at Bon Air Presbyterian Church. I think of so many ways that you pour out your costly oil, whether you see it or not, whether you value it the same as Christ does or not. We have a group here that every year makes and prays over prayer shawls that will be given to individuals at a time of illness or of loss. And just in my short time here, I've heard numerous, numerous people talk about what a huge gift and comfort it is and how that is such a sacred gift. 
I know just a week ago, last weekend, a number of us met here in the front and in the memorial garden to put down mulch and do a spring cleaning. And while that seems like such a simple thing, every day here, the preschool gets to share in this space, gets to grow and learn and play and break bread and know that they are loved here because of the work you do. And especially with the memorial garden, that's a space where people get to pray and meditate and connect and remember and lift up loved ones who have gone before them. The simple acts of using our hands and feet mean so, so much and are treasured. It's a huge group of you here at the church who every Wednesday night prepare dinners for us. And I can tell you after two weary years where we haven't always been able to be together, having a week, a one night a week where we get to break bread and have a warm meal and share and fellowship truly is a gift from God. This coming Tuesday, we have a large group of people from this church who will be doing the simple step of being present and speaking up, going to the Nehemiah action in, in, in downtown Richmond and speaking to our elected officials and saying that we care about our neighbors. We love our neighbors and we believe every person should have a safe house to live in and that every life should matter and that we should be doing what we can to bring about safety and life and love and community here in Richmond. That step is simply showing up and speaking up and it may not seem that much to each one. To Christ, that is the same as that valuable oil being poured out, blessing the world with your love and your care. There are so many other ways you all do it, from teaching children to using your gifts of music to going out and serving outside these walls at places like Bainbridge or Feedmore or when we can get back inside Bonaire Juvenile Correctional Center. And I know I'm just touching the service for all those ways, but I want to encourage you, whatever it is, the ways and gifts that you have for serving the world, know that it's not a small thing. It's not a little thing. It's not a waste. Know that your way of service and of love and of care, it means the world to others and it means the world to Christ. That your actions of love mean more than anything. So this day, as we come forward to the communion table, we're going to do a little bit something different. As we saw with the children just a bit ago, we invite you before you receive the bread and the juice to put your hand out. And that myself and Reverend David Anderson are going to bless that hand with oil, reminding that each of us have gifts to share. Simply a blessing on the hand, remembering that the Holy Spirit is inside each of you and that God has a unique calling upon each of you. As you come forward, I invite you to meditate upon what that may be. Not that it has to look like anyone else's, but what God may be truly calling you to do. Maybe it's something you've been doing for years or decades or maybe it's a new step of faith. You've been kind of on the wall about, not sure whether to take it or not. And this day, you remember that it, it can truly be a gift to this world, shining light to others, bringing so much love. May you know how much Christ values each and every one of you. And may you know that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we offer up our gifts to the Lord, remembering that all of it comes from God. The earth and everything in it is made by the Lord, and that we simply get to live in it and share in it and celebrate in it. And as we do so, let us offer back our time, our prayers, our service, and our gifts, trusting that the Lord welcomes it all and uses it for the work of God's kingdom. <laughs>